Hi and welcome to PeaceMeg TV. In this video for WooCommerce, we're going to be taking a look at the basics of working with taxes. Now, taxes can be quite confusing along with things like shipping, and I'm going to take you through just some of the basic things so we can get those set up. We'll take a look in a lot more detail in a future video on how to do a lot more complicated things with taxes, but for now, this should give you a good heads up on the basics. Now when you install WooCommerce and you go through the wizard, you get the option there to set up some basic tax and shipping options. But we're going to assume the fact that you've actually bypassed that and you're going to go in from scratch. If you had gone in through the wizard, then you can follow along with the same settings. You just would have done this a little earlier. So all we need to do is jump over to WooCommerce in the admin section of WordPress and we're going to come out to the settings section. Now once that loads up, you can see we've got an option that says Enable Taxes. If you've already checked this, then this feature will be available to you. If you haven't, once we do that and we hit Save Changes, we'll have a new tab that gives us the tax options. Now let's just jump over to that and we can see some of the options we've got available. You can see we have various different sections across the top. At the moment, we'll look at the tax options, which is a basic overview. Next up, we've got the standard rates, reduced rate taxes and zero rate. So we're going to go through and take a look at some of these things in a moment. Start off with, we're going to go through this first section, which gives us the ability to specify how we want to work with taxes in WooCommerce. So you can see the very first option is, how do we want to deal with this? Do we want to enter the prices of our products, including or excluding the tax? Now, obviously, this comes down to how you prefer to work. There's no right or wrong way of doing this. It's just how you want to work with it. So for this example, I'm going to go through where the price is entered with tax, and I'm going to choose the option that says, I'll enter my prices inclusive of tax. But if you prefer to work with exclusive, then you can do that as well. Both those options are available. Now, with everything inside WooCommerce with the settings, you can see everything pretty much has a little question mark before it. And this is going to tell you what this feature does and give you some tips and tricks in various different locations on how to best use this particular function. So if you're stuck on something on here and you think, what exactly does this mean? You've got that option available. So just take your mouse over and it'll give you a little pop up with some additional information on there. Okay, so next up, we've got the way that we want to calculate the tax. So do we want this to be based upon the customer shipping address, the customer's billing address, or the shop base address? Now, obviously, there are various different scenarios on why you choose one of these over another. And for this example, I'm going to say that I want it to be based upon the customer's billing address. Okay, next up, we have shipping tax class. And again, you can see we've got a little option that tells us what this particular function is for. And we also have various different options available. So you can see we've got shipping tax class based on the basket items, standard, reduced rate, or zero rate. So for this example, I'm just going to leave this on standard. But obviously, I'm going to take a look at this in a lot more detail where we start taking a look at creating more complex tax-based calculations for your website. Next up, we've got the option for rounding. In other words, we want to round the tax up to subtotal levels, including sort of instead of rounding per line. Again, it really comes down to how you prefer to work and the kind of scenario that you're going to sort of face with your shop. We've then got additional tax classes. You can see we've got reduced rate and zero rate. Again, we're going to leave those as they are. We don't need to change anything in there for this example. Now we've got the option to say, how do we want to display the prices in the shop? Do we want to show them including or excluding tax? Now this is the kind of thing that I think it really depends upon the customer base that you're working with. If you are basically a business to business based online shop, then it's probably kind of standard practice to show your prices excluding any taxes because businesses will generally tend to claim those taxes back. But you have the option to choose whether you want to show it including or excluding tax. So I'm going to leave that excluding tax. And then you see we've got the display, prices due in the basket, and checkouts. And again, we've got the same options in there. So you can, if you want to, have the same option in both locations, or you can have different ones depending upon the scenario you're working with. Next up, we've got the price display suffix. And we'll come back to that in a couple of moments once we've seen how to set the taxes up. And I'll show you how to use that and some of the other things you can do. It's pretty cool we're using that particular function. For now, we'll leave it alone. Next, you've got the display tax totals. Do we want to display that as a single total or do we want to display it itemized? Again, it comes down to how you want to set your shop up, but you have the options there to show it as an itemized sort of tax listing or as a single total. Okay, so let's just hit save changes on there for the couple of tweaks that we've made. And let's just jump over now to the standard rates. And once we're in there, we can now go in and we can set up any standard rate tax with filters applied to them. So let's just say you're dealing with just one country. And in this instance, I'm going to be dealing with the UK. 
You can see I've got the option to put my country code in if I want multiple countries. I can also then go through and put a state or postcode and zip codes in there. So it means that I can subfilter out and have different tax rates depending upon where the person that's actually having the ship to or purchase depending upon what feature you set up in the previous stage. And this will then go through and make sure it applies the right applicable tax to the basics of whoever's receiving it. So I hope that kind of makes sense. Next up, we can do it even further. We can filter this down to the city. We're going to keep this really, really simple. We're just going to insert a new row. We're going to set this to be GB for Great Britain. We're not going to put a state code in, zip code, or city code in there. We're going to leave this blank because it's going to cover the entire UK. Next up, we're going to put the rate of tax that we're going to apply. And for this example, we're going to put standard VAT rating, which is currently 20%. Once I go to the tax name, I'm just going to give that the tax name of VAT. And you can see we can also set up priorities in here. So if you have multiple taxes potentially applied, you can specify the priority of those taxes and how they'll be listed in the actual ordering process. Next up, we've got the option for compound taxes. So you can see this is whether or not this is a compound rate. As it says, are there compound tax rates are applied on top of other tax rates. This is a standard sort of VAT rate, so we're going to leave that as is. And the next option and the final option there is, do we want to apply this tax to the shipping? Again, it really comes down to how you want to do it. If you like to sort of separate these things out, or if you're finding that your shipping method doesn't require any kind of tax to be applied to it, you can check or uncheck that, depending upon your scenario. We're going to uncheck that, and we're going to leave that as is. So we've got everything set up now to apply tax. Hit Save Changes, so we now have our tax rate applied. Okay, so let's just jump over to a product, and let's just refresh that page. Now you can see that's showing a, t a sort of pre-tax rate of £12.50, but I don't really know as a person that's buying this, does that include tax? Does it not include tax? I'm just kind of a little bit blind. So if you don't want to sort of annoy your potential customer that when they get to the checkout side of things, they look at that and go, well, it said £12.50 and now I'm paying £15. You know, it can kind of get a little bit annoying. So we can kind of compensate for that. Let's just jump back over to WooCommerce and let's go back over to the tax options. Now in there, I said we've got this display, uh, sort of price display suffix. And what that's going to do is it allows us to put some additional information in there. So I'm going to put in, sorry, excluding VAT. So the person that's seeing this now will see straight away that this is the price exclusive of VAT. We hit save changes. We'll jump back over now to our page and refresh this and take a look at the price. We'll refresh it. Once we do that, now you can see that that tells us it's £12.50 excluding VAT. So that's pretty cool. Now, we can take that one stage further. Let's just say we want to tell someone that the price excludes VAT or includes VAT, whatever we want to do. We also want to give them the price including the tax. So we've got £12.50 is exclusive of tax. We want to show them the price including tax. So we're very clear and concise and everybody can see exactly what's going on. Well, we can do that. We can jump back over, and we've got a couple of little things we can do at this point. So I'm going to delete that out of there. And if we take our mouse over the little question mark, you can see we've got a couple of best practices. If you look at the bottom, you can see there's two little blocks of short code that says price including tax, price excluding tax. Okay, so we can take that, and we can put that information in there. For this example, I want to show the price including VAT alongside the price excluding. So I'm going to put that little bit of information in there. You can see we now have price including tax, which is the little short code block. We'll hit save changes on there, jump back over and refresh this. And you can see we now get after the price excluding VAT, we've got the price including VAT. Now, again, this can be a little confusing. So people might look at it and go, well, what exactly does this mean? Well, let's just jump back over into here, and we can just append that by putting ink VAT. So we clear up any confusion that those numbers may actually make. So let's just come back over, refresh that. We now have something that's just a little bit clearer and just shows exactly what's going on. So we can use those little short codes in there, and we can fine tune, and we can adjust, and we can append information on there, just sort of to make the whole thing clear. And if we want to, we could say excluding VAT like that. I'll put a little separate in there, refresh that, or save that page, refresh, come back into this. So now we have something that shows us that information. So anybody that sees this, whether they're a business-to-business -business customer or whether there's someone that's purchasing this that can't claim the taxes back, they can now see exactly what's going on in there. Very, very quick and easy, just by using some sh simple short codes and appending and prepending some additional information in there.
And that's really it. That's all there is to the basics of creating tax values inside WooCommerce. Like I say, there's a lot more things we can cover and we will in a future video, but this should be enough to get you up and running with putting some basic tax rates in for your online shop. Well, I hope you found this video useful. Hope it's given you an insight into how you can start working with taxes in WooCommerce for yourself. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up and smash that subscribe button to be kept up to date with all the new content we add every single week. Until next time, take care.